Hey, smart people. In this video, I'm going to give you my five best ways to skyrocket your score on final exams. In fact, use these easy to implement strategies and get dramatically higher grades on any type of test. What you'll see here will surprise you. Each of these strategies is unexpected and none of them have anything to do with studying harder. Stay tuned because you're going to discover a few of the strategies that the world's best test takers are using right now to outscore you, even though they don't know the material any better than you do. You know, when you take an exam, you're really being tested on two things. Number one, of course, is how well you know the material. But the second thing is how well you take tests. There are proven strategies, tricks if you will, that are being used by people you may incorrectly think are just smarter than you. By the way, if you like what I'm doing here on this channel, be sure to subscribe, comment, and like my videos. Also, please enable notifications with that little bell icon and share these videos with those you care about on social media. We're going to cover a few things to do before the exam and a couple of things to do during the exam that can have a significant impact on your grade. Now, the interesting thing here is that not one of the strategies you're going to get is a big deal by itself. In fact, they'll seem to be really small and insignificant at first. That is, until you begin to understand the full benefit. It's like grains of sand. They're tiny. Here's some from my backyard in Florida. Insignificant, right? But if it gets into the track of my sliding glass door, it becomes really hard to open. However, use a couple of drops of WD-40, again, something very small, not a big deal, the door opens and closes like butter. Little things can oftentimes have a profound difference on your result. Now, each of these strategies has multiple parts, so let's dive in. Strategy number one, eliminate the biggest grade killer of all, stress. We're going to look at several ways to reduce or eliminate your stress before the exam. Get to the test location early. Nothing is worse for your stress levels than running late. Look at it this way. Do you think that being late, fighting traffic, running down the hallway, sweating, being out of breath and feeling out of control could possibly have an effect on your attitude? <laughs> of course. Can you see why arriving early will give you a better feeling of being in control? Absolutely. Be overly prepared. Wake up earlier than you think you need to. Leave home earlier than you think you need to. Things go wrong. Traffic jams, unexpected last minute mini emergencies. The dog pukes on your rug. You need to stop for gas. When you get there early, you can relax and get your mind focused on the task at hand. Next, leave your problems outside the test room. How is worrying about that zit on your face going to help you get a good score? How is dwelling on the argument you had with your parents or your children going to help you? Leave your problems outside the test room. Don't worry, they'll still be there when you get back. Nobody will walk off with them on you. Focus on doing well on the test. Put everything else out of your head for a little while. Avoid stressful situations before the exam. For example, right before the test might not be the best time to ask out that girl you've been attracted to. Or ladies, don't ask out that cute guy. Save it for later. Don't pick a couple of hours before the big exam to confront your roommate or little brother about snooping in your dresser drawers you'll wind up bringing all that negative garbage into the test room with you. Visit the test room in advance. Whenever possible, visit the room where you're going to take the exam well in advance. 
Doing this provides you with a couple of different advantages. First, you'll know exactly where you're going on the actual test day. You won't get lost or begin stressing out trying to find it at the last minute. Secondly, it helps you mentally prepare. You can imagine yourself in that room taking the test. And this is especially important when you're taking an exam that's being held at a remote location. Oftentimes, you may need to take a scholastic exam like the ACT or the SAT in a facility other than your school. And nearly every professional certification test is given away from the office where you normally work. For example, the LSAT, the MCAT, Series 6 and 7, life insurance, real estate, CDL, and so on. You'll be able to determine where parking is. You'll know what the actual exam room looks like. You'll be able to relax knowing it's one less thing to worry about. <sighs> breathe. Yes, something as simple as learning how to breathe properly can seriously reduce your stress. Now, don't take this lightly. This is actually a really big idea. When you're stressed, your breathing is short and shallow. Change it. Breathe slowly and deeply. Count as you do it. Inhale for a count of three. Hold for a count of one. Exhale for a count of four. Do five rounds or more, extending the inhale, hold, and exhale as you're able to. So, if you feel yourself tensing up as you prepare for your exam, or while you're in the test room, simply breathe. It works wonders. Strategy number two, the absolute best place to study. Notice, I didn't say how to study for it, I said where to study for it. There is one place that is absolutely far and away the best place to study for any test. Nope. Not the library, or the park, or your room. The single best place to study for any exam is the room where you're going to take that test. I'll tell you why this works in just a second. And yes, I realize that this may not always be possible, especially if you're taking a professional certification test of some sort. They're unlikely to give you access to that room until the actual exam time. But you may try to get there as early as you can and do a, a cram review using your flashcard notes beforehand. Whenever possible, do as much of your last minute study and review in the classroom or auditorium where you're actually going to take the test. Why does this work? Home field advantage. You know that in sports there's such a thing as the home field advantage. The same is true about taking tests. The idea is to feel comfortable in that room. Dress rehearsal is another example. In the theater, actors will have a dress rehearsal on the stage where they're going to do the performance. Also, there are mental connections. At the subconscious level, your mind makes tiny but important connections. Strategy number three, find out what kind of test you're going to be taking. Is it going to be a multiple choice, fill in the blank, an essay exam, a combination of those things? As you'll see in other videos on my channel, there are specific strategies you can use for different types of tests. It's just like a sports team watches films of their opponents before they play against them. The better you know what you're up against, the better you can prepare. So how do you find out? Well, there's really only three ways I can think of. Number one, ask the teacher. <laughs> Almost always they'll tell you. I mean, after all, what's the big secret? But maybe you've got a paranoid teacher. It could happen. Number two, ask for copies of past exams. It's common for college professors to make past exams available to you. And number three, judge from the past. It's rare for teachers to change their style of exams from one marking period to the next. Knowing what type of test you'll be taking can help you decide how to study. 
Do you need to have a thorough in-depth study session or do you want to cram for it? You know, there's a great line I've heard used in several movies. Chance favors the prepared mind. The more prepared you are, the luckier you get. Strategy number four, eliminate distractions during the test. Pick the right seat. <laughs> yes, I know, it may sound weird, but picking the right seat in the room where you're taking the test can often have an impact on your score. Where you sit should be free from distractions. Don't sit near the door, as people may be coming and going. Stay away from the heater or air conditioner if possible. They may be noisy, or the change in temperature may make you uncomfortable. Don't sit near the windows, because there may be noises or distractions outside. Kids playing ball, people laughing, whatever. And don't sit near that hottie you've been crushing on. That's one distraction you certainly don't need now. Wear the right clothes. Nope, I'm not kidding. What you wear can have an effect on your score. Let me prove it to you before I give you some examples. In a study led by Professor Karen Pine at the University of Hertfordshire, she had co-eds wear swimsuits while taking exams. They performed poorly on the tests compared to their normal results and also compared to their swimsuit wearing male counterparts. The women were too self-conscious, while the men weren't affected as much. Professor Pine says research shows that what we wear affects us. Putting on different clothes creates different thoughts and mental processes. So, knowing that, here are a few tips. Dress comfortably. You don't want to be too hot or too cold. If the air conditioner blowing on you bothers you, bring a light jacket. Don't wear a scratchy sweater or pants that are too tight or new shoes that may hurt your feet. Dress stress-free. Wear something that makes you feel both physically and mentally at ease. Don't try to be stylish or attractive or sexy. Be comfortable and you'll do better. Strategy number five, use proper self-talk during the test. I'm sure you've had the experience where you know that you know the answer, but you can't get it to come to you at the moment you need it. You can feel it on the tip of your tongue, but can't spit it out. You can feel it rattling around inside your head, but you can't get a hold of it. Usually, that's due to stress. Unfortunately, the way most people deal with this problem is exactly the opposite of what they should do. Almost everyone who is faced with this issue says the same things to themselves. I can't remember. Oof. Sometimes they make it even worse by saying it out loud. That is the absolute worst thing possible to say to yourself. You've all had this experience. You're having a conversation with a friend and you're talking about something like, I don't know, maybe old TV cartoon characters. There's one you're thinking of, but, but the name escapes you. And then hours later, Maybe when you're brushing your teeth and you're getting ready for bed, the name pops into your head. Snagglepuss! <laughs> How did that happen? Well, I liken it to having a little personal search engine assistant inside your brain. When you tell it to go look for an answer, it works its way up to the attic in your mind. It's looking in this box and behind that cobweb, and then it's down in the basement searching here and there. But if you say, I can't remember, you confuse your little search engine assistant. They don't know if you want it now or not, so they go slower. Eventually, when they do find it, they'll send it to you with a flash. You can feel the answer pop into your head. It's almost like a physical feeling. Well, you can control how fast that process happens. You've got to use the right words. I call them magic words. Yeah, I know it sounds corny, but this technique works like magic, even if you don't believe it. Here's what you say. 
it will come to me in a moment. Then you take a deep cleansing breath and go about answering the other questions on your test. Don't be surprised when a few moments later, the answer pops into your head. The cool part is, the more you do this, the better it works. You've just got to be a little patient with yourself. Tell your little personal search engine assistant to go find that answer and bring it to you now. Then breathe, continue with the test, and more often than not, it'll work. Cool, right? You'll see. But you've got to use the magic words. It will come to me in a moment. Okay, by themselves, not any single strategy we covered is a big deal, but the results are synergistic. Put them together and multiply the effect to get a vastly more powerful outcome. Not one of them had to do with knowing the material better, but combined, these strategies can help you to skyrocket your test scores. Be sure to watch my videos on taking multiple choice tests and writing excellent essays, as they will help you with specific strategies for those type of tests. Post your comments below and help spread the good news about what we're doing here. And remember, everything I teach takes just a little bit of effort. After all, the fastest way to get to the top is to get off your bottom. I'll look forward to seeing you on my other videos.